Here we go again. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag have been hit with their fair share of injury worries over the last couple of seasons, and it doesn't seem to have changed so far this campaign. However, the current international break may have come at the perfect time for the club. The week without Premier League action gives players extra time to step up their recovery without missing what could be crucial games, especially given the pressure on manager Ten Hag, with United considering his position. United return to action on Saturday, the 19th of October. They host Brentford at Old Trafford with kickoff at 3 p.m. The good news for Ten Hag is that up to five players could potentially return from injury for that game. In a triple injury worry, Alejandro Garnacho, Kobe Mainu, and Nusser Mazraoui have all withdrawn from international duty due to injuries. It is understood that Garnacho has pulled out as a precautionary measure and should be fit to take on Brentford. While the timeline is not so clear on Mainu and Mazraoui, there is a possibility that they could be in similar situations. Ten Hag may also be able to call on Mason Mount, who has missed the last two games with a knock and a head injury. The game against Brentford could also see the return of fullback Luke Shaw, who is yet to make an appearance this season due to a calf injury. Speaking last week, Ten Hag was hopeful that he could make his first appearance when the Premier League returns after the international break. While the match against the Bees could come too early for three other players, there may not be too much longer to wait until we see them all in action. Defender Harry Maguire has revealed that he will be out for a few weeks after being forced off in the first half against Aston Villa. Longer-term absentees Tyrell Malaysia and Lenny Yoro are also closing in on a return. A knee injury has kept the former out of action since the final day of the 2022-23 Premier League season. The 25-year-old has now taken part in training sessions on the grass at Carrington as he looks to build up his fitness. According to Premier Injuries, he could make his return at the start of November. There is a bit longer to wait for summer signing Yoro, who suffered a fractured foot during pre-season. The defender is making good progress and shared an update on his recovery this week. It is hoped that the 18-year-old will be able to make his competitive debut for the club next month. The away game against Ipswich Town on Sunday, the 24th of November, is the one that has been picked out by Premier Injuries as his possible return date, on the other hand. Here we go again. There is a tense situation at Manchester United as Ineos discussions continue. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has not received any updates from the club regarding the potential ownership changes involving Ineos. According to football journalist Fabrizio Romano, the situation remains tense as Ineos, led by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, is still having internal discussions. The lack of communication has raised concerns, especially as fans and stakeholders eagerly await news about the future of the club. Ten Hag, who is focused on his team, is left in the dark about any decisions or changes that may affect him and the club's operations. The ownership saga has been ongoing for several months, and many hope that a resolution will come soon to bring stability to the club. However, for now, the uncertainty continues. All eyes are on Manchester United after a seven-hour crisis meeting was held in London to discuss Eric Ten Hag's future as manager. The meeting took place in Mayfair and was led by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, along with key figures like Sir Dave Brailsford, directors Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox, and CEO Omar Barada. Manchester United has had a poor start to the season, picking up only eight points from seven games, which has put Ten Hag under pressure. As the team heads into the international break, rumors about his possible sacking continue to circulate. However, Ten Hag remains confident that he will be given more time to turn things around. According to the Times, if Ten Hag were going to be sacked, the club would have made a public announcement after the meeting. Since no statement was released, it seems his job is safe for now. The club has not informed Ten Hag that he is at risk of being dismissed. One name linked to possibly replacing Ten Hag is Inter Milan manager Simone Inzaghi, who has impressed many with his success at the Italian club. However, reports from Italy suggest that Inzaghi has already turned down an offer from Manchester United during last season's September international break, as well as an offer from Chelsea. In other news, a Manchester United wonder kid dubbed Kid Messi is training with players four years older than him. Joseph Jr. Andreo Gabriel, who goes by the name JJ Gabriel, 
is one of the most highly rated youngsters at the club. The teen sensation celebrated his 14th birthday at the weekend, but has already outgrown his new age group. Gabriel has been promoted to train with Man Unmuted's under-18s, such as his talent. At the age of 13, he was a regular for the Red Devils under-16s last season. And in the summer, he won the Most Valuable Player Award at a preseason tournament in Hong Kong after scoring two and assisting another two goals. He was presented with his accolade by United hero Dimitar Berbatov. The Mail report that Kid Messi has left coaches blown away by his skill. He will not get minutes for the under-18s, but training with older players should help his development and give him a new challenge. Gabriel has already been snapped up by Nike, signing a deal with the sportswear giant. And on Instagram, he shares pictures with the likes of Barcelona, star Lamine Yamal, and Cristiano Ronaldo's eldest son, Cristiano Jr., 14. Gabriel has been on the books at Old Trafford since 2021 again and again. Louis Saha fears the presence of Christian Eriksen and Kabi Mainu as a midfield pairing is creating more problems for Manchester United captain Bruno Fernandes. United have endured a miserable start to the season, which has left Eric Ten Hag's future at Old Trafford under intense scrutiny during the international break. Fernandes's form has also suffered, failing to score in 11 appearances, having also been sent off in two of his last three games with the first of those against Tottenham, later rescinded. 19-year-old Mainu has been a fixture in midfield, but Ten Hag has chopped and changed when it comes to picking his partner in the middle of the park. Casemiro started the first three Premier League games of the season, but has been a substitute since. Manuel Ugarte, a £50 million signing from Paris Saint-Germain in the summer, struggled on his first league start against Tottenham, and was also benched for the goalless draw against Villa. Eriksen has started three of United's last four league matches, but Saha fears the Dane and Mainu do not have the legs to properly support Fernandes, also fearing their positioning is not right. It could be a bit of bad luck that Bruno Fernandes hasn't scored yet. He's hit the bar, and these things happen, Saha told Paddy Power. He doesn't seem to be as confident, but also Manchester United's tactics are a part of it. He hasn't been helped and been given many passes by the wingers. His talent does the talking, but when the talent doesn't talk, you'll find him struggling. His work rate has been the same, but the team aren't linking up as well. Some of those tactical choices in midfield, United have good players but they're missing the legs. Kabi Mainu and Christian Eriksen are good on the ball, but sometimes they play too deep and not close enough to the strikers. They're too far away and their positioning is not right. It's a struggle to watch. Meanwhile, Ahmad has withdrawn from the Ivory Coast squad due to illness. The 22-year-old had been due to take on Sierra Leone in an Africa Cup of Nations qualifying doubleheader, with the home game set for Friday the 11th of October and the return taking place next Tuesday. However, the United winger will now return to Manchester, where the Reds host Brentford in our next Premier League outing. Ahmad was capped by the Elephants for the first time in 2021 and has so far made six appearances at international level. He was recalled to head coach Immerse Faze Group after a 15-month absence in June as the 2023 African champions beat Zambia and Chad. Another couple of wins during the October break would ensure a spot at the next tournament, which is being held in Morocco during December 2025 and January 2026, 2026. Earlier this week, Alejandro Garnacho, Kobe Mainu, and Nusser Mazraoui also withdrew from the squads of their respective nations as a precaution. The times and dates of all the senior matches involving our players can be found in the International Reds Guide. In other news, Lenny Yoro has posted a video on Instagram illustrating the fact that he is stepping up his rehabilitation by running on a treadmill. The summer signing from Lille has still to make his competitive debut for the Reds after being injured in the preseason fixture against Arsenal in Los Angeles. He is in the right spot, and he will return as soon as possible into the squad and then the team training, Eric Ten Hag told us at the end of last month. Yoro conducted an interview with former United centre-back Rio Ferdinand at Carrington recently for TNT Sports and relayed how he was finding things in Manchester and what fans can look forward to seeing when he does regain fitness. It's bigger.
he replied, when asked if the club was as big as he had anticipated. I don't know if I was ready for this, but I cannot complain. It's good. The fans, the stadium, he continued. Everything is good. I try to be intelligent on the pitch, to play with my head, to understand the game, the opponents, and to be calm. I want to be calm on the ball and when I defend. Meanwhile, Harry Maguire will miss a few weeks of action after picking up a muscle injury during Sunday's 0-0 draw at Aston Villa. The England international pulled up just before half-time following a Villa free kick and had to be helped off the pitch by medical staff. He did not return for the second period in the West Midlands and was replaced by Matthijs de Ligt, who helped the Reds preserve our clean sheet in a tight game of few chances. After the contest, Eric Ten Hag said a proper diagnosis was required, and the centre-back has now posted an update on his situation via Instagram. Frustrated to pick up an injury at the weekend, will be a few weeks on the sideline for me, but I'll come back stronger, he wrote. Harry has featured nine times for the Reds so far this season, starting six games and making three appearances off the bench, including in Porto on Thursday, when he headed home an injury-time equaliser to complete the scoring in a 3-3 thriller. Ten Hag's central defensive options in the meantime include De Ligt, Johnny Evans, who was man of the match at Villa Park, and Lisandro Martinez, while Victor Lindelof is also available again. The Swede made his first appearance of the campaign as a halftime substitute at the weekend and has been selected for his country's UEFA Nations League meetings with Slovenia and Estonia. In other news, Eric Ten Hag is set to remain as manager, with the Manchester United board failing to come to a mutual decision on his future at the club, reveals Fabrizio Romano. High expectations from Manchester United fans for the 2024-25 season were met with an underwhelming outcome, after a series of poor outings pushed the side to 14th in the Premier League table after seven games. Despite the Dutch tactician having returned a League Cup and an FA Cup during his tenure at Old Trafford, some supporters are now demanding a change of leadership, citing poor transfer plans and a lackluster style of football as key reasons behind his dismal performances. Ten Hag faces uncertainty in the days ahead, but following the most recent meeting among the club's top brass, he may find that he is afforded a little more time to launch a last-ditch attempt at putting things right. Via his daily briefing, Romano delivered the latest update on Eric Ten Hag's imminent future, following board meetings in the past days. He wrote that, Manchester United had meetings yesterday, but at the time of writing, I have no substantial updates on what was discussed and what it means for how the club's plans are taking shape. It's a situation to follow hour by hour as it involves many people, they're discussing several things after the poor start to the season. It includes the management, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, they're discussing all together. So at the moment, while I'm writing this, Man United have not made any firm decision yet, and Eric Ten Hag remains the manager. It follows after the Manchester United higher-ups gathered for a pre-scheduled meeting to discuss club operations ahead of the mid-November international break. While details of the meeting were kept under wraps, it seemed inevitable for the future of Ten Hag to emerge as a talking point. With just three triumphs in the ten fixtures across all competitions since the Premier League opener against Fulham, Manchester United's abysmal form has left a serious dent in their ambitions for the season. These results have been matched, or even worsened, by poor performances on the pitch, leaving few sources of optimism for fans to look forward to. However, despite recent events, the former Ajax boss looks set to continue for the time being, with the United board failing to reach a firm decision. Earlier reports from ESPN journalist Rob Dawson also assured that the club don't want to sack Eric Ten Hag, having already committed to his plans. Also, through his daily briefing, Romano revealed that the club were also considering transfer plans for the winter window in January 2025. He wrote that, it's also been reported that transfer plans for January may have come up in this meeting, but my understanding is that this will be their topic in December, not now after just eight games for sure. Undoubtedly, there are plenty of areas for reinforcement in the current Red Devils squad, but there is the sense that further investment into Ten Hag's transfer plans may only drive the club further down an incorrect path, 
and so it may be vital to evaluate the manager's future before coordinating on incomings and outgoings. As per Romano, the club will discuss such details in December, which could imply the maximum time Ten Hag has remaining in Manchester to potentially turn the ship around. On the other side, Ten Hag's future as United manager remains up in the air following six hours of talks between senior figures in London on Tuesday. Minority owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe hosted an executive committee meeting at Ineos headquarters in Knightsbridge, during which Ten Hag's position is believed to have been discussed. However, the meeting ended without any update on Ten Hag, who has gone on holiday during the international break, confident that he will stay in charge. Ten Hag is under intense pressure after a woeful start to the season, which leaves the 13-time Premier League champions 14th in the table on just 8 points from 7 matches, their worst ever start in the competition. Two draws in the last week, including a 3-3 stalemate against Porto in the Europa League, and a goalless run out against Aston Villa on Sunday, ended a run of defeats, but did little to steady Ten Hag's position. Ratcliffe was seen leaving the meeting with director Sir Dave Brailsford, his right-hand man, who has been heavily involved at Man United since Ineos sealed minority ownership of the club. Ratcliffe had refused to give the Dutchman his public backing last week, insisting Ten Hag's future is not my call. Male Sport understands the ultimate decision on Ten Hag's future will be made by him, Joel Glazer and Brailsford. Their decision will be based on recommendations from Man United Chief Executive Omar Barada, Sporting Director Dan Ashworth, and Technical Director Jason Wilcox. Ratcliffe and Co-Chairman Glazer had been present at Old Trafford on Monday for a fan advisory board meeting before heading to London today. Chief Operating Officer Colette Roche and Chief Financial Officer Roger Bell were also in attendance at the Executive Committee meeting. United are wary of fueling speculation over Ten Hag's future after Thomas Tuchel and Simone Inzaghi were linked with the job if he is sacked after two and a half years in charge at Old Trafford. Ratcliffe is known to be an admirer of Tuchel and met the German coach in Monaco during the summer when Ten Hag's future was in doubt before the FA Cup final. Tuchel is still available, but it's unclear if the obstacles that prevented him from replacing Ten Hag then can be overcome now. Money was said to be one of them. It's understood there has been no new contact between United and his representatives at this stage. Tuchel's potential appointment would see him return to manage in the Premier League for the first time since leaving Chelsea in 2022. The other obvious option open to United is to install Ten Hag's new assistant, Ruud van Nistelrooy, as interim boss. The former United striker returned to Old Trafford as part of a summer shakeup of the coaching team, having had managerial experience at PSV Eindhoven. Van Nistelrooy has got to know the players and staff, and is well respected around the club. Otherwise, the landscape has changed very little since June, when United decided that keeping Ten Hag was the best course of action and gave him a one-year contract extension. Meanwhile, plans for a new Old Trafford Stadium took another step forward last month, as the first images of a potential regeneration were revealed. On the other side, it's confirmed that Harry Maguire is set to miss a few weeks due to a muscle injury sustained in Manchester United's 0-0 draw against Aston Villa. The defender was forced off before half-time and was replaced by Matthijs de Ligt. Maguire confirmed the injury on Instagram, expressing frustration but vowing to return stronger. In his absence, Eric Ten Hag has de Ligt, Johnny Evans, Lisandro Martinez, and Victor Lindelof available for central defensive duties. Meanwhile, since becoming Manchester United manager in the summer of 2022, Eric Ten Hag has established some favorites at Old Trafford. During his stint at Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag won the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup during his stint at Old Trafford, but his future is certainly in the balance.